Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, I haven't done a video in quite a long time, but looks like the weather will be turning a bit more interesting again uh, as we exit February and go into March. And we're potentially looking at uh, some colder weather and possibly snow um, on the way, though things are remaining quite uncertain. Uh, though the thing that is certain is that we have increased cold and snow chances compared to uh, kind of how January and February have been going uh, so far, especially February. Um, so if I start off um, with kind of going through the GFS runs, you can kind of get an idea of the weather for the next few weeks. So this is the latest run uh, from 6 o'clock, and you can see the next few days generally quite dry with some showery rain in the west. Um, and then look how basically around kind of the 25th, the 24th and the 25th, that high pressure aligns kind of to our north, uh, so to the north of Scotland. So it's quite dry still. And then potentially uh, getting a bit cooler, we get a kind of a slight easterly wind there. And if I show you the temperatures, you can see we're bringing those bluer colours as things potentially turn a bit colder. And then you can see we kind of get some more blue colours. We stand at high pressure, so things will be remaining dry. And then notice how towards the end of the month, those colder, uh, the colder air, those blues and purples start to emerge. However, this is the end of one GFS run, so it's very kind of unreliable just looking at one. So we kind of try and look at multiple things. And if I show you the last GFS run, this is from this morning, same idea, high pressure uh, moves kind of towards kind of Scandinavia during the end of February, and then we get suddenly a push of cold air um, towards uh, the beginning of March, as you can see there. And if I show you the past runs as well, uh, you can see uh, same thing, high pressure moves like that. Uh, and then we get cold air coming in from the north. And if I show you yesterday's 12 o'clock run, you can see uh, we get kind of cold easterly air pushing in like this, and then uh, more cold air from the north. So, as you can see going through that uh, those runs, there is not a lot of certainty. There is not any uh, model confidence or model agreement on uh, how much cold there's going to be, all those kind of details. But what we have seen, the reoccurring theme, is that it does look like we have the potential for increased cold uh, towards the end of February and into March. And usually we would kind of dismiss this, we would say um, it's just being normal GFS, end of the run, kind of crazy things. However, something recently uh, much higher up in the air, uh, which is quite interesting, has been going, uh, uh, going on. And that's the kind of the stratosphere, the weather in the stratosphere has kind of changed. And actually you can see here, we are now undergoing undergoing something called a stratosphere, a sudden stratospheric warming, which is basically where the air really high up, this is 10, where the pressure is 10 uh, millibars or hectopascals, usually at the surface it's around 1,000, so where it's so little that's just 10, that shows you it's really high up in the air, um, and essentially uh, that is usually pretty cold, like negative, I think, negative 50 degrees, negative 40, negative 50, and actually what's happened is that that air has really suddenly started to warm, and what that means is that our usual zonal winds, which means uh, west to east uh, winds in the stratosphere have reversed, and you can see that, uh, we can see the blue line uh, tightly packed, so good model confidence, going to but, uh, negative 10 to negative 15 uh, meters a second there, uh, showing with the zonal winds have actually reversed, interestingly, and that potentially has some effects for us on the surface because sometimes those zonal winds in the stratosphere make their way down to the surface and I'll just use this as a illustration I'll get the pen out here our usual winds are like this our usual zonal winds like that sometimes from the stratosphere they make their way down to the surface uh, and when they get a reversal like shown there we sometimes uh, make uh, get those uh, reverse zonal winds down to the surface as well um, in a form of an easterly and also, we can sometimes get increased high pressure, and high pressure, especially high latitude blocking, or where the high pressure is kind of quite far north like that, can often mean increased cold air flows. So we do actually have, interestingly, support for a potential cold spell as we go into March. Um, and as you can see, we actually have a, a forecast for a second weakening of the stratosphere, which is quite interesting and could potentially enhance some of those effects. Um, and if I show you the something else, this is called the MJO or the Madden Julian Oscillation, and this is kind of a measure of the thunderstorm activity in the Pacific Ocean. So it's slightly kind of more obscure, uh, and you might be wondering how that affects the UK weather. But actually, there's been kind of a, quite a strong link uh, has been shown, especially. 
as we get to phases kind of six, seven, and eight, there is an increased uh, kind of support for blocking across the UK, so increased high pressure across the UK. And so, interestingly, the MJO or the thunderstorm activity in the Pacific. Uh, as you can see by this, uh, the yellow line, that's kind of the general forecast. You can see it seems to be aligning towards kind of the phases, it's kind of six, seven, and eight, as you can see, as we go into March there. And that, uh, that kind of coincides with our weakening zonal wind, which means we do know that a increased likelihood of high pressure, um, we have a really increased likelihood of high pressure into March. And interestingly, there seems to be a, a few suggestions that the high pressure will uh, set itself up favourably so that we get um, uh, cold airflows possibly into March, so increased risk of cold spells and snow. And if I show you this kind of uh, regime ensemble kind of chart from the European model, it may look a bit confusing, but it's not actually that complicated. Um, basically, on the where it says EOF1, that's the North Atlantic Oscillation, where we have negative, that's increased risk of blocked weather and cold weather, and we have positive, that's increased risk of mild and kind of more zonal unsettled weather. And on this axis here, we have the uh, the blocking, uh, kind of just index for blocking, and the increased value show increased high pressure. And interestingly, you can see almost all the ensemble members, um, let me get the pen out, support, um, the kind of regime turning, I'm not sure if this pen is going to work, but uh, uh, turning more, as you can see, more blocked, definitely blocked. So we've got almost full confidence on high pressure, uh, so dry, settled weather into March. And also, uh, possibly something a bit colder as we get towards those kind of negative uh, NAOs kind of turning like that, potentially something a bit colder. So kind of a quick summary is we know it's, there's going to be high pressure February into March, we know it's going to be dry. Oh, and we also know that March, uh, especially end of February, early March, could potentially be colder and possibly we have the risk of either easterly or northerly airflows, which do bring the risk of snow. Yeah, that's kind of a long way, around two to three weeks away. So we have to wait until closer to time for those details. Um, but anyways, uh, that's a summary there. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.